Hey guys, I just wanted to touch base and send out a short video to help you get started on the mastery problem for chapter two. Before we get into that, I just want to do a quick review uh, from some of the ideas and concepts that we've built up throughout chapter two that you will use uh, to be able to complete the mastery problem, which I would add again is going to be just like what you see on the test, in addition to some uh, true false, some matching, um, and vocabulary. The actual working part of this is going to be just like the mastery problem. Uh, so at least want to get you started. Let's do a quick review of what we talked about. We introduced the idea in chapter one of the accounting equation, which is assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. We have a left side and a right side. We are now in chapter two, further breaking this down into things called T accounts. Eventually, in chapter three, we're going to work on making journal entries, and that is going to be what the challenge problem is like for this chapter that is going to be extra credit, but I'll show you that. So back to the review. Uh, T accounts also have left sides and right sides. In a T account, the left side is always just the debit side. The right side is the credit side, and T accounts eventually fit in underneath sort of an asset or a liability or an owner's equity. That's how, kind of how they're classified. A T account instead of up here would be replaced by the account title, something like cash, supplies, accounts receivable, or even uh, like an owner's capital account as well. So debit left, credit right. Debit left, credit right. Remember that. You got to have it memorized. Which side goes up, which side goes down, we'll cover next. Uh, assets are on the left side of the accounting equation. I'm gonna just go through this real quick and then I have one more visual. Uh, we talked about assets and again, assets are on the left, debits are on the left side of the T account, therefore debits increase assets. Liabilities and owner's equity are on the right side of the accounting equation, therefore credits increase uh, liability accounts and owner's equity accounts. We also introduced this idea of a normal balance. It's more of just a title or like a term that we would use to say uh, assets have a normal debit balance, which just means the normal balance is always on the side of the account that increases. Since uh, debits increase assets, you would use that terminology. You would say assets have a normal debit balance. Liabilities and owner's equity, on the other hand, have a normal credit balance, which means credits increase liabilities. So this slide just sums up what I just showed you there and what we were just talking about. Again, I don't say it too often, but this is really, really worth memorizing. It's going to help you for the rest of the course. If you are going to study business in any college or anything like that, if even if you open your own business, you're going to have to know this stuff. Uh, so memorize T accounts, debits left, credit right. That's the first thing. Next, memorize assets are increased by debits. Liabilities and owner's equity are increased by credits. If you remember those two things, then you'll be able to just fill in the blanks for the credits. Well, on assets, again, anything, there's an increasing side and a decreasing side. So if we know debits increase assets, then credits decrease assets. Flip side on the other side of the accounting equation for liabilities and owner's equity, debits decrease, credit increases. Owner's capital accounts, the drawing account, whatever, any of those owner's equity accounts we talked about, sales, revenue, uh, investment, stuff like that, uh, debits decrease, credits increase. So just a quick little review. Um, one last thing as you're going through is just remember this slide here. As we look at each transaction, uh, we talked about these four questions. And this is what you kind of need to be able to do to walk yourself through this because it seems like a lot, but it's not too bad if you break it down. So first of all, as you're looking at these uh, transactions, ask yourself which accounts are affected, okay? Um, cash, prepaid insurance, or is it a cash and a sales, whatever. How is each account classified? Well, cash is an asset. And say you're talking about getting cash from a sales. Well, in that sense, uh, cash is affected. That's one of the accounts. And sales would be the other account. Cash is an asset. Sales is part of owner's equity. How is each classification changed? Well, when you receive cash from a sale, uh, cash increases and sales also increase. How is each amount entered in the accounts? When you talk about a single transaction, you're always going to have one debit and a credit. It's, you're not going to have a debit and a debit in one transaction. 
All right, so a uh, debit and a credit. So you can talk about it in that. So if you receive sales or if you receive cash from a sale, you need to debit cash because remember debits increase cash. Question number three, we have to increase cash. How do we do that? We debit cash. Uh, then we have to credit sales because remember, sales is a part of owner's equity. It's on the right side of the accounting equation. On the right side of the accounting equation, credit increases owner's equity accounts. So we would then need to credit sales, making them both go up, making both of our sides of the accounting equation equal. All right, that's the review part. Let's look at the mastery problem. I'm just gonna get you set up on that. When you log on to MindTap, uh, click on chapter two, review. You're gonna scroll down. Here's kind of a summary of all the stuff that you guys have done so far, the vocab and the study guide. Um, I had you look at the application problems, which are just for practice. You can try those as many times as you want by hitting that try again if you want to restart or reset them. Um, so I'm not going to take that. But the mastery problem is a part of your grade. And there's an extra credit problem on this, too. It's the same idea, but you're going to be writing them in a little bit of a different way. Um, <clears throat> so since it's extra credit, I'm going to kind of let you guys try to figure that one out. Um, if need be, we can kind of go back through it again too, but let's worry about the mastery problem right now, which will be 10 points for you. Um, click on that. Click there. So again, this is going to be exactly what you see on your test, uh, which again, I will post, uh, on Wednesday, but you'll have the whole weekend to do it. Um, first of all, just kind of like some of those application problems, we first have account titles. These are all the different accounts that you're going to be working with, and all the transactions are going to deal with at least one of these, if not multiple entries per account. So we deal with cash a lot, so there's going to be a lot of entries on cash. Uh, we have an accounts receivable and for uh, Lee Chen and Ginger McCure, which are also asset accounts. It just means that uh, we're going to be Garden Plus is our our business that we're working with. So Garden Plus performed services for these people, and now they're going to probably owe the money, supplies, prepaid insurance, uh, so forth. We have our Simon Dirks capital account. Simon Dirks would be the owner of Garden Plus of our business. It's just like Michael Delgado. He has a capital account and a drawing account. Um, we can talk about the different owner's equity accounts here. We have sales, different expense accounts based on that. So again, we're kind of looking at that chart of accounts for Garden Plus. All right, so we're not gonna really do anything with that. Um, it's nice because on the mastery problem, all of your account titles are actually already listed. So you're just gonna have to figure out what day the entry happens and then what side of the T account, the debit side on the left or the credit side on the route, uh, on the right that the amount actually goes. So I'll get you guys started and we'll do a couple but I'm not going to go through too much more because this is part of your learning process and your grades. So I'll give you the answers, though, uh, after tomorrow if, if we need to. So um, once you submit it, you'll actually be able to see where stuff goes as well. Um, so if you click over on the transaction side here, um, you'll see a whole list of transactions. Now, note, it looks like there's 30 transactions, but these are not numbers. These are dates. So sometimes you have two transactions made in one day. So this is May 1st, May 2nd, May 4th, May 4th, May 5th, May 8th, 9th, and so forth. All right, so that's gonna be important. I'll show you where that goes. And then also the amounts are gonna go there. So let's look at this first transaction here. I'll highlight it there for you. Well, I guess it's not working. Okay, anyway. Uh, on May 1st, Garden Plus received cash from an owner, Simon Dirks, as an investment in the amount of 3700 So looking back at those four questions, what accounts are impacted? Cash and an owner's equity account, which is going to be the capital account. All right, capital is what that is. Drawing is when they make a withdrawal of something. Uh, it, would, it would impact that, but we're going to be working with the capital account. So we're working with transaction on May 1st. So when you receive cash, uh, we said, what are those accounts, uh, cash and the Simon Dirks capital account? How are each classified? Cash is an asset account. Simon Dirks capital is an owner's equity account. That's question two. Question three, how is each impacted? Well, when you receive cash for anything, your cash is going to increase. And when it comes from an investment, that means that the owner's equity account, that Simon Dirks capital account is also going to increase. So we have an increase and an increase. 
And now what are we going to do? So we know that we need to increase cash. How do you increase uh, an asset account? You have to debit it. So May 1st, that's what that means right there. May 1, we're going to type in, we got cash from the owner in the amount of 3700 We're going to type it in right there. There is no need to put a plus or a minus because, again, you know that on the left-hand side, there's always the debits. If it's on that left side, it's going to increase cash. So this is the same as saying like a plus 3700 but you don't need to put the plus there because you know it's on the debit side. Therefore, it is increasing. So our second entry, we need to go down to Simon Dirk's Capital because that's our second account. So also on May 1st, that was increased by 3700 So what have we done here? for receiving cash from the owner as an investment. We have debited cash to increase that asset account of cash, and we have credited Simon Dirk's capital, also on May 1st for 3,700. So both increase, go forth. We'll do one more. Paid cash for rent. Well, anytime you pay cash for something, it means your cash is going down, all right? So cash is an asset, May 2nd, we paid cash of six hundred dollars. That's one. Uh, the other trans or the other account that's uh, affected is going to be our rent expense account. So also, we just need to scroll down and find our rent expense, which is right here. And so, uh, if we were up here and we credited cash, which means we made cash go down by crediting it, we need to debit because again, it's kind of the opposite. You're always gonna have a debit and a credit. You're gonna debit rent expense on May 2nd for 600 bucks. And that's it. And so you're gonna have all these different transactions. So as you go down here, you're gonna see paid cash, received cash, paid cash. So you're gonna have a whole list of different transactions and just the dates go on either side. So again, on May 1st, we debited cash, but then on May 2nd, we credited cash. And on like May 11th, we might credit cash again for a different amount. So you're just kind of coming down the list here, making sure your dates, just the numbers are there, and then the amounts are in those places. Find your accounts, go back and review as necessary, uh, and you should have something for all of these boxes. Uh, well, not necessarily, no, because some of these boxes, for example, like rent expense, uh, that is going to be the only thing we do on rent expense. So you won't have anything there. So you might have some uh, uh, empty boxes too. So I hope that helps. Um, I will let you guys work on that. Please email me if you have questions.